Yo, what's up, what's up, what's up, everyone? How y'all doing today? This is Aaron Collins, and this is another rendition of me addressing worldly issues in a godly way. I trust and pray that everyone is doing well. So without further ado, this is going to be another movie review. So I'm going to get into it. The movie I'm going to be discussing today and reviewing is a movie called Hustlers. Hustlers stars Jennifer Lopez, Kiki Palmer, Constance Wu. Uh, who else is in it? Um, those are the main ones. Um, we also have uh, what Cardi B's in there, Lizzo, Lily Reinhardt, uh, and, and rounding out the round, round, rounding out the, the supporting cast would be Julia Stiles and. The legend herself, Mercedes Rule. So let's get into it. So the movie Hustlers is actually inspired by a true story. I'll get into it later on. Um, yeah, it's inspired by a true story. And it takes place um, in contemporary New York City in the, in the really the upscale stripping market. Up at the upscale world of um, you know, being a li of life of a stripper. Uh, Jennifer Lopez plays a character named Ramona, who is a top money owner at a club in New York City. Uh, one of Manhattan's um, top, well, I don't know if it's Manhattan, but I can only assume it's Manhattan or downtown New York. And one of their top high-end um, upscale areas. So, she, yeah, she stars as, a, as Ramona, who is, a, who is a top money owner at a club. And she knows how to, you know, shake it. And she knows how to make it, drop it like it's hot. Make make that money. <laughs> you know, like they say, I'm using all the terminology that they use. But yeah, she goes out there, she gets her money. So along, while she's out there, she's working at a club where she meets, meets Destiny, you know, played by Constance Wu. And Destiny, she's a, a struggling, up-and-coming you know, woman. She's trying to... Now we basically get in, get together in her life. By the way, the year is 2007. You know, that's a circa 2007, which is about what 12 years ago. Yeah, about 12 years ago, 2007. Um, United States was pretty um, on the uptick. Anyway, so she's um, struggling, trying to make ends meet, just trying to do what she has to do. Plus, she's taking care of her ailing grandmother. And along the way. While she's working, she you know, happens to come in contact with a few uh, other strippers who who seem less uh, unlikely to share in the profits with her. She has some she has some uh, run-ins. Back then, she was basically the new girl, and you know they, no one wanted to take her under their wing, so she would usually just sit by the sidelines and, and just watch, just watch how everyone make their money, um, do the things. So along the way, I said this already, she does meet Ramona. Ramona decides to take her under her wing. She teaches her the ropes of how to, to dance on a pole. She even um, introduces her to one of the, the top girls in the club, Diamond, played by none other than Cardi B. Teaches her how to dance. Teaches her how to, basically how to be erotic. It introduces her to the world of the erotic upscale stripping culture and a lot of their, their clientele are basically usually middle-aged either to oh, and some of them younger I say younger middle-aged older white guys that are in the Wall Street stocking exchange they're, they're in that area they're, they're in the these men, the men that they um that their their clientele are usually from what's the, what's the word I'm looking for the stock market so these guys, um, these are some big time movers and shakers when it comes to finan the financial market. So yeah, these guys, um, they come into a strip club. A lot of them are stepping out on their wives. There's even one scene where one guy in particular who's supposed to be a really a prominent in, in the um, financial market, he even has his own private elevator into the club. He goes into the back so he can't be seen, and which basically is really letting us know that there's people who we would never expect who go into these types of circles and who do these things 
and you would never know because they don't take the same entrance as say the regular public a lot of these guys are are known and a lot of them are are super rich and wealthy they step out on their wives they step out on their lovers and whatever else just for a night of fun and they spend money like it's not, not going out of business so back to Ramona and Destiny Ramona takes Destiny on her wing treats her like um, a daughter loves on her protects her no Ramona is basically the den mother of this group of girls eventually along the way comes Mercedes and Annabelle who were played by none other than Kiki Palmer and Lily Reinhardt she grooms these young ladies they have fun they enjoy each other and then things start to happen um, 2008 comes and as we know the the famous recession hit of 2008 hit America and it even struck the even struck the stripping market I mean nobody was able to make money and they were no they were no exceptions they weren't exempt from the economic collapse because no no one was coming into the club and they weren't putting dollars in there they weren't getting lap dances or anything like that so yeah they had to take menial jobs working at retail stores and doing other things just to make ends meet so after a while they go back to the club that they used to be they see a few people that they knew that they worked with and you know it, things were starting to come together a little bit but they weren't they weren't quite the way that they were they weren't really making the money that they were used to making so they all had to start over themselves in the meantime destiny she hooks up with a guy meets a guy they live together for a bit they um do the couple thing and then as a result destiny winds up having a child as a result of this union uh, something happens they wound up breaking up, have a fight. He goes this way. She still is living with her grandma, taking care of her grandma, and now she has a child along the way. Her grandma is pretty much her, her world right now, Destiny's world. She gives her money. It's not really um, noted if Destiny's grandmother knows what her granddaughter does for a living. It would probably, she, she probably has an idea and once again, she probably doesn't know. If she did know, it may break her heart. But then, knowing that, I can just pretty much guess that her grandmother would probably be a first-generation Asian immigrant to the United States. So, judging by her age, I would think that she would probably, she probably herself had to do a few things to get into the United States herself. So maybe she wouldn't be so judgmental. A lot of immigrants that come to the United States, and this is not what, I'm not getting into an, an immigration talk, I'm still talking about the movie, but I'm just trying to give a breakdown of the character Constance Wu, Destiny's grandmother, what she probably had to do to get here herself. But anyway, let's get, let's get on back with the rest of the commentary. So Constance, I mean, Destiny is taking care of her grandmother, and now she has a child, and she but she still has to make ends meet, she's not getting enough, enough money so she winds up going back into the strip club and happens to see Ramona again after not seeing each other in a while they embrace each other they reconnect glad to see one another and it was during this time where Ramona offers her a proposition talks to her about going into and into the, the high end, uh, let's see, what's the word I'm looking for? About get, getting more out of what they're trying to do. And she talks to her about how to get what it is that they want to get. Basically, basically in a way, she's uh, telling her to use what you got to get what you want. In a, in a roundabout way. And, you know, a lot of the guys that they go into, that go to the, um, the clubs, they go there, spend ungodly amounts of money just for a night of passion and fun before going back home to whatever it is they go back home to so she teaches her the ropes again 
And this time, the, the stakes get higher. Basically, she teaches her how to basically get guys drunk, get them so high to where they get their, their, get their credit cards, where they sign with their own card, sign their cards over and, and just basically pay them. Or they wind up lifting their credit cards off of them. Now, a lot of these guys just get, now they get, they get wasted. They get um, so zooted to where they don't know what it is they're doing. So the two other young ladies, Mercedes and Annabelle, come in also. And they're also part of the scheme as well. And, you know, it's fun for a while. They're making money. After a while, Ramona, Ramona who also has her own daughter, she starts to adopt these young other young ladies as, say, her... They say they call each other sisters. Basically, they're like a family. So there's a family dynamic here. It's a not exactly a proper family, but it's got a family dynamic. You now Ramona, basically, like I was saying before, she takes these young women under her wings. She has pity on them. She's had a thing for Destiny since she saw a picture of her, and Destiny told her about what happened to her when her own mother and by the way this is all told from the standpoint and flashbacks from destiny destiny this is destiny speaking in the year 2014 to uh jennifer which is a you know a character played by Ju julia styles i'm not sure if she's a psychologist or i'm not sure in what um the character that Julia Stiles plays, I'm not sure to what. I don't know what her character is. But anyway, she's somebody that she winds up talking to as a result of her, I guess, getting out of um, parole. Because this is like post after jail when she gets out. So they go back and forth between the flashbacks 2007, 2008, uh, 2011. This is when um, the economy is starting to get its get his bearings back not quite where it used to be but it's starting to get his bearings back in, in the meantime so fast forward or in this case rewind uh, Ramona Destiny Ramona Destiny Mercedes and Annabelle are now um, at, at, the, at the top of their game they're doing the things that they want these young ladies are she's teaching these young ladies how to get men how to get close to them now, a lot of times they, 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 they get even little drugs which they pour into their drinks. The young men, the, the men are usually un, um, unaware of what's going on. They drink these drinks. Uh, they, they take the, the substances, whatever, unbeknownst to them. And the rest is history. They get their credit cards. They go out and buy house, well, buy uh, material wealth. They buy cars. They have fun. After a while, it gets to the point, though, where Destiny is starting to have... She comes into conflict with Ramona, and where she starts to have a heart for these guys, to which Ramona tells her that these guys have everything. She talks about um, how a lot of them are being white men, that how they pretty much have everything in society that they wanted, how they, they've taken over countries, Basically, she's justifying her wrongdoing. Destiny still doesn't understand it, but after a while, she starts to see what Ramona's talking about. At least for now, we see that. But after a while, um, they start to go back to doing their same thing. And then one of the gentlemen that they ripped off has some kind of reaction to a drug and tries to dive into a pool. He winds up landing on the sidewalk. Guys, butt naked, of course. Um, so they take the young, they take the guy to the hospital. Not knowing what to think, they panic. They leave. Um, after a while, the gig is up because one of the young men calls the police, lets them know. One of the men that they they took advantage of calls the police, lets them know what happened. 
After a while, they get investigated, realize that these young that these young ladies were in fact doing what they were doing. They had their own little financial empire. While they're sitting in jail, the cop, the investigators, talk to Destiny. Oh, and it was after this time that Destiny lost her grandmother. Her grandma finally died. And it's just left with her and her daughter. Her daughter, she and her daughter go live with Ramona and her daughter. While she's sitting in jail, or not sitting in jail, she's sitting in the police station being investigated. The cops happen. The cops, they question Destiny. Destiny makes a deal. Much to the dismay and the anger of Ramona. Ramona feels betrayed. She feels that after everything I've done for you, I've taken you in, I took you under my wing, and this is how you repay me. And that's the dynamic it comes from. Destiny feeling bad for what she did to her friend. She also has a sense, though, of freedom to where she could lay down at night now, where she could sleep at night. However, she's basically now a pariah in the community, she and the rest of the young ladies. Everyone gets on probation time or get time served. They obviously probably don't serve any real time because it becomes, even becomes like a federal matter and DEA. Uh, so there's um, a lesson to be learned here about taking advantage of people, uh, about doing things to folks in, when they're in an inebriated condition. So I said this before, that this is inspired by a true story. What I was saying, um, going back to that, I believe that this is actually based on Cardi B's real life. Now, a lot of names were changed in the movie, but I think this is based on Cardi B's real life because recently Cardi B, in an interview, was saying that before she became famous, she herself actually used to take advantage of guys uh, when she was stripping take advantage of them when they would get drunk or wasted, take their credit cards and pretty much leave them out to dry. These guys were literally left like the young like the guy in the movie were literally left assed out. So there's a lesson to be learned here. So there's a different um dynamics. Uh, there's a dynamic of taking advantage of people, how it can come back and bite you. There's also a family deal in here, how Ramona, who she was not necessarily a bad person, but she was not, she was really a bad influence also on not just Destiny, but on the other young ladies involved too. She was not really a good um, role model for them, uh, not to mention her own daughter. So, um, yeah, she wanted to maintain her lifestyle. She was living what seemingly was a, a posh type of life. And she wanted to continue to maintain that herself. So, yeah, she's uh, living her, wants to live her life on probably on fifth, maybe on Fifth Avenue or, you know, live maybe somewhere in the Hamptons. Wherever it is she was living, she wanted to maintain that. So, I would consider Ramona more like an anti hero, so to speak. She wasn't a nefarious, a Luciferian, evil type of what they would call, she wasn't an evil bitch type. She was she was just somebody that was trying to look out for other people but leading them down the wrong path. Destiny, on the other hand, like a lot of strippers her age, young woman, beautiful, just trying to make it in life, trying to make ends meet, take care of sick relatives. You know, that's the, really the life of a stripper. It reminds me of the song that Wyclef made back in... I would say Wyclef made a song back in 01 about how just because she dances for show doesn't mean that she's a hoe, which is true. Some of these young ladies do get caught up in that lifestyle. They do take it too far and do fall down the rabbit hole. But young women such as Destiny, they really hate that life. They really hate do the work they want to do. But they just want to... They, they want to just not make it. Because there's even some scenes where... Where Destiny is actually trying to get work doing retail. Where she's trying to work at a high-end store. And because of her past life as a stripper... 
she gets frowned upon, she gets judged, and I, I, I see, I, I was, I'm actually rooting for her, you know, empo, you know, relating to her, you know, being empathetic to her situation, like, man, she's just trying to, trying to make it, she's just trying to take care of her grandma, she's trying to feed her child, I mean, give her a chance, but when you deal with a world of corporate greed and everyone's out for themselves, you tend to get people kicked to the curb. It's like Ramona even said herself, which is a very good analogy, said that the whole world is a strip club. It's all about that almighty dollar. Everyone is, sh is shaking it. Everyone's trying to, to get that dollar. So that's what I would take out of this movie. Um, no disclaimer. This is not me in any chance, in any way, shape, or form, telling people to go out and strip. No, that is not what I'm saying. Because um, I wouldn't wish that type of lifestyle on my daughter if I had any. I, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't wish. I wouldn't wish that on anybody. But I'm understanding how things work, how it's an analogy for, an analogy for life, and the fact that it used as a backdrop the 2008 economic fall to show just what people would do in, in desperate times. You see, one thing that you learn here is that when folks say that what they would and what they, what they would never do, I've learned this, that when your back is against the wall, you don't know what you would do. You would do things, you would put it this way, you would get resources and gain some knowledge and some power that you never knew you even had. So when you're being pressed against the wall, when you're being cornered, when you have nowhere else to go, you come out fighting. You come out scratching, kicking, clawing, whatever it is you have to do to get back on top, to get back on your feet. And that's what I suspect what these young ladies were doing. Now, what they were doing along the way, yeah, it, it was fun while it lasted. They you know they got their kicks. They they got they they had their little fun, but then reality set in. Reality set in, and then after a while, they were being, even though they were victimized, they started becoming the predators themselves, when they took advantage of these men, and took them for what they had. So, yeah, that's pretty much my review of Hustlers. It was a decent movie. I know I, I liked it. You know about the the high stakes world of stripping in a high, at a high profile club. You know in Upper NYC. So yeah. So my advice to people: if you hadn't seen it, um, I hope I didn't give no spoilers. Go see it. If I did give some spoilers, forgive me. I apologize, but go see it and see for yourself. You know what what what's going on. Uh, Cardi B being in the movie, I had a really round out of supporting cast. Mercedes Rule, like I said, she was in it. Legendary actress, she played the character Mom, who was pretty much like a mom to all the strippers in the club, including Ramona. Uh, Lizzo was in the film. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, so, yeah. Anyway, everyone, let me know what you thought about this review. Like, comment, subscribe. I'm, I'm getting a little bit better with my oratory skills. Uh, trying to get a little bit better with narrating and doing a movie review. Yeah. So hit the bell icon to be notified when I drop more videos. Support the channel, y'all, at paypal.me forward slash the real Aaron Collins, as well as patreon.com forward slash the real Aaron Collins. Eventually, y'all, I'm going to go and get me a Cash App, too. Uh, I know Cash App, that's what a lot of content creators are using as well. Well, um, eventually, I'm going to go and add that to my arsenal as well. So, you know what? There's nothing wrong with doing none of this. Hey. No, there's there's all kinds of hustles. There's good hustles and there's bad hustles. So don't knock no one's hustle. 
just because of something that you wouldn't do or I wouldn't do, you don't know the reasons why the other person is doing it. And that's what's up. Mm -hmm. All right, everyone. Well, you know what the, the deal is. Uh, God loves you. I love you. Let's do life. <laughs>